Hello, this is Reza Rad from Red Acad, and in this video I'm going to talk about Power BI subscription. What is Power BI subscription, how you can use it, uh, which is a way to get a report, uh, like a copy of the report or dashboard sent in email inbox to some of the users. How does it work? How you can get it working in Power BI? Let's check it out. So what is Power BI subscription? Power BI subscription is a way that we can use to, um, to create uh, automated or let's say scheduled base on a specific frequency copy of the report sent to users. This can be to me as an end user myself, I can subscribe to a report myself so that I get copies of that, let's say 8 a.m. in the morning every day, or I can subscribe multiple people and groups of people so that they can receive copies of this. Uh, depends on how you do it and different access levels that you have on the object, this can work differently. So let's see how this works out. So here I have um, I have a Power BI service uh, workspace. This is my workspace. Power BI subscription is a workspace, uh, is a, let's say, Power BI service functionality. So I can go to any of the reports that I have, any of these dashboards or reports. When I click on it, then on the top of the report or dashboard, you should see an option for subscribe, which is a place that we can create subscription. This is the same for the dashboard as well. Now, when I go to subscribe, I can create a new subscription and the subscription configuration is pretty simple. First, you need a name for subscription. It's a good idea to set a name specifically if you have multiple subscription per object. For example, in this report, if you are going to create two, three different subscriptions, better to have a name for those. You can add email address of the people you want to have in this subscription. By default, it's your email, but you can add other people email addresses in there too. Like for example, I can add my other email account. When you add other email, um, uh, you have also the option a little bit later down here that you can give them permission to the report. But this re really depends that do you have permission on, on that report yourself to be shared or to, to share it or not. For example, if it is in a workspace, then the situation might be different. But if it is a report you created in my workspace, then you normally can give them this option. You can also give them the ability to uh, have a link to report in Power BI so they can click on it and this opens in Power BI, a preview image of that report with the up-to-date data. Uh, because subscription is going to be an email, um, you can define what the subject of that email is going to be, what message you want to include in that. If the report has multiple pages, you can choose which page you are subscribing to. The frequency, do you want daily, weekly, if you want it weekly, which um, days in a week, if you want it like hourly, all of these configurations are possible. One of the interesting one is this, uh, that you can set it to be after the data refresh. Like for example, you set your data set to refresh uh, once a day, let's say uh, five in the morning, as soon as the refresh completes, then you want this to be sent as a, like a subscription uh, to, to those users. Uh, just remember that this only works once a day. So if your data set is scheduled to refresh like three times a day, this only would send once a day for those. Um, so frequency configuration is one of the things and it's pretty simple to adjust. Uh, you have seen also what you can include in the report. After you save and close this, this would be a subscription, then you can um, go and change it as well. But I'll first show you what the subscription email look like. So this is an example of the subscription email. As you can see, it has uh, the subject. This is the subject line that we specified. It is coming from no reply power bi .microsoft.com. It has an image attachment. That is the preview image we've selected in that um, subscription setting. That image is also here. The link to the report. This is the link that we also checked that we want to link to the report. This is the optional message added there. And Power BI itself also adds some messages, uh, some descriptions around it. So this would be an email sent on a scheduled basis. Quite quite handful, uh, quite handy for, for real users so that they can use these um, and, and they can get up-to-date information. 
Now, once you created this subscription, how you can actually manage it? There are two ways to manage it. One is going to that specific report. For example, I go to this report, I've created the subscription for it. So when I go there and I click on subscribe, I see existing subscriptions there and I can go and edit them. Here is also a good example of uh, setting a specific name for this. So if I had proper names here, like for example, this is for developers, uh, save and continue. This is a different, um, sorry. This is a different subscription for end users. Then you have multiple, multiple, uh, Subscriptions, it's a good idea to have a proper name for that. So you'll be able to see all these subscriptions. You can even run them now as a test to see how they work. Uh, turn it on or off and uh, you can delete them if you want, or you can go and edit these configurations and change it. That's how easy it is to uh, change or manage your subscription. But to do this, you have to remember which reports or um, dashboards you have created subscription for it. Another way that you can see all the reports and dashboards that you have created subscription for it is to go to the setting in Power BI website, into the setting, then again setting, so that setting icon, then say setting. This is a place that you do set up all the settings and configurations in your uh, account in Power BI website. One of them is also subscription. So when you go to the subscriptions, uh, if you have any other reports that you created subscription on it in even other workspaces, you'll be able to see all of them in here and then you can modify them from here. So more, more like a central place for you to see all of your subscriptions. If this is done by a workspace admin, workspace admin would be able to see even subscriptions that is created by other users. I'm going to talk about that later. So that is how subscriptions is created, how you can manage it, how you can edit it. Now, what about end users? For most of the end users, first subscription to the object uh, works just like, like what I've showed you. If they have that object in their workspace um, or in a workspace that they have view access, they would be able to do that uh, and go and set up subscription. But if they are accessing that content through an app, which I'll bring another user over here and I'll go to app and show it to you what happens. So if this is a user and this user actually goes to an app like this, and this is the app configuration. As a user, I can subscribe to this app, but because I'm the user, I do, I'm not the owner of this app, I will not be able to subscribe others to this subscription I'm adding. It would be only for myself because I'm not the owner or I do not have the edit access on this content. So I can go and create subscription. You see this, all of those elements that we had before is there, except we don't have that place that was before here, which we said who this subscription is going to, because this would be only for myself now, or there is no option uh, here that was um, previously and was saying that add permission to the report because again, this is only for myself. This is also valid if I create a subscription in a workspace that I have view only access. If I have view only access, let me go and show it to you again. So here I have a workspace that in this workspace, uh, my access is view only access. That means I can view the content in this workspace. I can go and select any of these contents. I can create a subscription. Uh, when I create a subscription, then uh, I think it is not view only. I think it is contribute just to make sure I'll check that workspace on here. So this is the admin account for the workspace. I can check the access of that user over here. So yeah, it is. So as you can see, the other user, that is the other user I'm showing you in the other screen is a contributor. So if it is a contributor, then this user would be able to come here and add others into here as well. But as you see, the permission to access the report in Power BI is disabled because contributor in Power BI workspace cannot share content. Uh, this means if that user has access to that report, 
we will see uh, like they will be able to see that in the Power BI, otherwise they won't, right? Uh, if I am the member of the workspace or admin of the workspace, then I would be able to also check that option. If I'm the viewer of the workspace, I wouldn't be able to even add others in that subscriptions because it's just for me. So viewer only can subscribe himself or herself. Contributor can subscribe others as well, but cannot add permission unless there's a setting in Power BI workspace that can be set by admin, which says allow contributors to share. Uh, without that, contributors cannot select this option. If I'm a member, the member can do pretty much everything, can give permission. And if I'm the admin, I can even see subscriptions created by others. I'll show it to you. If you have questions about how these different roles in Workspace works, I have created another video with all the details of uh, what each role is good for. Uh, so go and check it out. The link to that is down in the description below. Uh, so let's see what the Workspace admin will see. Uh, in this view. So this account is the workspace admin. Uh, to go and see all the subscriptions created in a workspace, I have to be in the workspace. As you see, I am uh, I am already in the workspace. Then when I go to setting settings again, under subscriptions, I would be able to see all subscriptions created by others. At the moment, only this user created the subscription. I can go and edit it directly if I want and make any changes I want because I'm the admin, I would be able to do any changes I want, or I can go and take over. Now, takeover is um, like, if I do the takeover, then the other user will not be the owner of this. The original owner actually changes. I will be the original owner of this from that point on board, which means that that owner, original owner would not be able to edit it, would not be able to even view it, right? So this is an option that you would only choose or use if that original owner has left the team, left the organization or something like that. If that person is still in the team um, and you might want to change it, then you just use the edit. This view of all the subscriptions created by all the users for all the content in the workspace is added very recently in Power BI and Power BI team announced it in the last couple of weeks. So uh, make sure to check it out, very useful option. The last thing, uh, what about data-driven subscription? What is data-driven subscription? Sometimes you want to create a subscription that um, you want each user to see a different um, view of the data. Now that, that can be slightly different than a um, normal subscription. For example, you want to share it with some users, create subscription 8 a.m., but the California branch manager see a preview image of California, and then um, let's say Texas branch manager see a preview of Texas. Uh, that, mm, like, is that possible in Power BI or not? So quick answer, data-driven subscription is not possible in Power BI. It is something we had in reporting services, but not in Power BI yet. But there are workarounds. One workaround is to set up rollable security. If that person is not really allowed to see other parts of data, set up rollable security in Power BI. I have videos and articles about that, and then set up subscription on top of that. That is one option. Another option is to um, create like a parameters in paginated reports in Power BI, then use services such as Power Automate to work with that. There are some articles you can find about it. So there are workarounds, but it is not, let's say, a feature at the moment. Hopefully this will be a feature sometime soon and we can use it. Uh, in short, in summary, Power BI subscription is a helpful way to have up-to-date version of the report in your email inbox and other users' email inbox as well. And recently, Power BI added some interesting features in terms of workspace admin to control um, the subscription created by the members. Go make sure and go and check it out. This is really helpful and can help adoption of Power BI in your organization. If you have any questions, feel free to write it in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you.